What is up guys? I'm Daddy Gamer Fred back again with another trailer reaction review. Today, as you can see, I'm doing the Battlefield 5 live reaction. This is actually going on live. It's not like the Black Ops BS fiasco that I basically missed a live event. They're basically jumping right into what it looks like to be a trailer. So let's check it out. Which I'm hoping it's a single player trailer. <laughs> I'm really, really. Oh, wait, let me move this. I'm really, really hoping they kind of react to. Oh, thanks, Brad. You know, <laughs> as long as I can remember. And over the past 16 years, these games have come a long way. From 1942 to Bad Company to Battlefield 4 mm -hmm. and up to Battlefield 1. And today, I'm taking on the most important mission objective I've ever been a part of. Telling all of you about Battlefield 5. His most get important. To go. My squad's out there, so let's deploy because we are live in London. Let's get the show started. Okay. 18, 16 years of Battlefield. So my predictions real quick while they're going through all this. Um, single player, they might have one. Which, to me, if they don't, is going to kind of put them in the same boat as black op i mean the black ops the um call of duty so i thought i think after watching what happened they gotta make it a spectacle this show and if they don't then that's just ea being ea but that's what i'm looking forward to is their campaign and their if they're gonna do battle royale i want to see it i want to see gameplay Mm -hmm. There we go. The five. Which is it going to be in the future? To the Battlefield Five live reveal. I'm your host for this evening, Trevor Noah, and I'm. What's up, Trevor? Introducing this new edition of Battlefield, which for some reason everyone has already assumed is Battlefield Five. I mean, and not Battlefield V. Could be V. Why not V? Battlefield <laughs> V could be just as good. Yeah. <laughs> the fans are the V's in their profiles for this game. Something my mother did many years ago, ahead of the curve. And most people don't know this, but the V in my name is actually a five. Yeah, my name is actually pronounced Trev Five or Noah. <laughs> As a huge fan of these games. Oh my God, the fake audio, um, um, audience laughter and all that. Battlefield ever. If you've ever been in a battle with me, you know that I'm the most dedicated support class you will ever meet. I'm in the mud repairing the tanks. You know, I'm laying down mines as tank rushes come in. One time, I even repaired a plane mid-air that might be alive, but I'm sticking with it. Because you see, I love that glorious joy of being the uncelebrated hero. This is already better than the, the Call of Duty event. Already better. It's cheesy. Yeah. But they know they are. Multiplayer, Battlefield 5 single-player war stories, and we'll start showing you the epic post-launch journey all players will experience when the game is finally released. And you know we've got some other surprises, so why waste time? Let's get straight into it and get the show started. I'm joined now by the producers of Battlefield 5. Andreas Game modes, Carl, vehicles. Gustafsson, everybody. The company. Oh, it's okay. Gentlemen, I'm not here as a professional or anything. I am here as a gamer. I am here as a Battlefield player. I am here to ask only the questions I am interested in. You have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> I knew it. I told you. <laughs> this is the best. This is great. Back to where the Battlefield franchise started, World War II. Now, at this point, are you are you like those guys? You know those elderly pilots that they find on an island in the Pacific? You know who think that the war never ended? Is that who you are right now? It it did. It ended. <laughs> you told me. We tried to break it to you gently, Lars. <laughs> but Lars, why why go back to that now? To be honest. Oh, they're going back to World War II. Okay. To go back to where it all started about 16 years ago. You know, technology has evolved and the team has gotten, gained so much experience that this is really the game we want. <coughs> that we do. It's, it's really something that the guys back on the guys are really passionate about. The whole era. Uh, just ask Mr. Battlefield, he was, he was there. <laughs> right, Mr. Battlefield, that's Lars's nickname, by the way. <laughs> I'm known as Madame Battlefield. <laughs> Now, play, players have experienced World War II in, in so many movies and in games. It's really difficult to come up with a new and fresh perspective. What perspective are you bringing to it with this version of Battlefield? Exactly. That's not Call of Duty. <laughs> or Inglorious Bastards? 
So we've seen all the movies, you know, we've, we've played the games, we've been there. I'm, I'm pretty sure at least I can navigate half of France without a map just by playing the games. <laughs> so, so for us, going back to, to, to where it all began for us, it's really about delivering a uh, World War II experience that no one's ever, never seen. Gameplay before. and modes. Sitting on the unseen That's what I want to see. Locations, the untold stories, the unplayed uh, moments. Yeah, I mean, for us, never, before was, never before seen portrayal of World War II. We'll be able to play the German forces, the British forces, and we want to take you on that journey, you know, to exotic places like freezing Scandinavia, it's kind of our <laughs> home turf, but in Norway, or, or rugged deserts where the battles took place in Northern Africa. Why not to the, okay. the ruins of the once beautiful Rotterdam? So it's really to take you on a journey, and we want to do this with a kind of a fresh and modern take uh, so really hopefully surprise the players but also to please them you've given me a sneak peek and so many words come to my mind i mean intense immense powerful ryan do you have a specific way that you want players to see this battlefield well i think the best way we can describe it is, is immersive i mean this this needs to feel like the most immersive battlefield that, you, that players have ever played i mean we want them to exploit the battlefield in ways they've never been able to before i mean when you look at the chaotic multiplayer okay you, you're talking but you're not showing anything like conquest and some of the new modes that the guys are working on like airborne um you know we're going back with war stories sort of that uh, anthology storytelling that we had uh, we, we built in bf1 and telling new stories about men and women that change history um i mean we get to tell everyone today that, that co-op is back in battlefield 5 and that's okay cool. that's cool and this is just the beginning. I mean, launch is just the beginning for this game, and we really want to take players on a journey through World War II. It always feels like it's a journey. That's what it always feels like with Battlefield. Like, one thing I loved about the game was how the maps and the world was constantly changing. Mm. You know, it felt like my bedroom at home. I never knew what to expect. <laughs> and I think when looking at this game, and this guy, man. Vision to take this to the next level. So we're really felt like my bedroom at home. I never knew what to expect. It's really about this guy, man. Players. The most immersive world that we could enter. Uh, you, you should really be grounded in it. Expanding on the movement set that we, we've done so well, uh, really pushing all these new features that we're going to be talking about. Right, it Come on, we're seven minutes in. Uh, Go ahead. Let's show us the game. Highlights that I'm looking forward to. Let's dive into it and talk about some of the gameplay. Here to do that is Daniel Berlin. Talk. Five, we're expanding the toolbox for the play giving you access to new abilities to create your own and brand new Show us a trailer already, right? Like now there's a deeper connection between the player and the world around you. You will be physically pushed by the shockwave from explosions. You can experience completely new ways to traverse and tactically maneuver across the battlefield with our overhauled movement system. Our renowned destruction will rip up the terrain, leaving mm -hmm. chunks of masonry hanging from destroyed buildings or have high caliber rounds with straight through walls to take out the enemies hiding inside. We're also bringing back classic modes such as majority rule conquest, but we also have new modes and experiences for our unique take on World War II. Okay, we're unique modes. With a bang, and we're calling it Grand Operations. Here you'll okay. experience multiple game modes as you fight over multiple maps, all wrapped within our narrative journey through historically inspired battles from World okay. War II. Operational is fine. Our anthology format for single player war stories with new characters okay. and untold stories to discover. Back to you, Trevor. Okay. Now, we still didn't see no gameplay. A new multiplayer experience called Grand Operations. And I'm really excited because it sounds to me like you can pilot a giant grand piano <laughs> like a tank. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that's what it is, right, Andreas? I'm not sure about the piano, but uh, it's, it's definitely massive. It's uh, it's really about reliving all these power fantasies from World War II, like airborne being power dropped in, and it's operations from Battlefield One, but bigger. It's it's really good. Yeah, I mean, what we want players to feel like is sort of a dynamic. Grand operations take, taking place over four fictional days. I mean, day one starts with you jumping out of an airplane and. Uh, with the objective to to destroy the enemy artillery, with that enemy sort of entrenching themselves to defend and protect, uh, and depending on how the outcome of day one goes for you, uh, as the two as the two main forces start to battle over day two in a game of breakthrough, uh, with the number of lives you have left remaining, depending on what you did the day before, and then as you continue to push okay. to new locations, we're going to see things like conquest assault, where players continue to fight for that that terrain. 
um, and assuming you know when we see these these players end up in a giant stalemate, then they're going to enter day four, which is final stand. And I mean, this is this is sort of tired, muddy, no resources left. You've got just you, your squad, and one and one clip, and you all fight to the last man standing with the weight of the world on your shoulders. So this is a game mode that you may never see if your games are not in a stalemate. You may never get to that fourth map and fourth story then. Exactly. That's an exciting way to okay. play a game. Uh, I, I want to know when we can see more of that. Two weeks. EA Play, Los Angeles. You get hands-on multiplayer for the first time if you're there. So even though okay. the brand operation spans across multiple events. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I heard you guys say that uh, co-op is back. And that's one of my... Show favorite. us. Show us. Show us, please. Show a trailer. Time since Battlefield 3 co op is back and oh wow, combined arms. Hopefully, my wife will play with me. You know, next to our war stories and the multiplayer. Yeah, the more war stories is gonna be fire. I'm hyped, they got me so paratroopers that go in behind enemy lines. And here, you really only have. The soldier next to you, <laughs> maybe not Brian. Yeah, but the soldier next to you. People in the chat saying RIP Call of Duty. You know, getting detected w might mean death, and you will soon be struck by resource scarcity. You need to find the tools and find your way to the objective. So stakes are high, and you you need to kind of assess: Can I push through, or do we need to extract early? It's it's kind of win or lose. It's up to you. I've been a huge fan of War Stories, um, the single player campaign in Battlefield 1. Um, yeah. What I, what I truly enjoyed about it was I felt like I was learning about the stories behind the war and playing through the stories of the war, and it didn't always end well. And what I loved is because of that history element, like I, for instance, I told my little brother, I said, hey, if mom ever catches you playing, just say this is a history class that you're doing <laughs> on the console. And then what I'd do is I'd tell my mom he was going to do that so she would know that I was always her favorite. And <laughs> what was great was seeing the story. Lars, like, how is single player going to change in Battlefield 5? <laughs> I'll tell this to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you changing? I mean, to me, uh, I'm happy that you like the war stories. And for us, the war stories are really our opportunity to put the war into perspective. It's really about us human and untold stories of the war. We try to portray oh, those wow, man. real and relatable people facing epic warfare. Don't tell me they're going to do a whole event and just show concept art. Please. So player agency is key, so you can create your own battlefield moments. And at the bottom line, it's about allowing you to witness the Second World War, but through the eyes of the men and women that changed the world. Yeah, I mean, as you, as you can see here, I mean, this is one of the war stories that we're going to be talking about first. I mean, this is our Nordlease story. Um, this is the story of a young woman um, who is part of the Norwegian resistance fighters uh, fighting the German occupation uh, during World War II. I mean, this is uh, an exploration of emotion and fear. 13 minutes in, no trailer. What the fuck? And this not only sort of really grounds the players in the reality, but sort of sets the context of the World War II that we're trying to I'm create. trying to do a trailer reaction review. <laughs> I'm doing a reaction to the fucking podcast. Instead of just focusing on the explosions and the gunfire, you see that look in her eyes. You want to know what she's thinking, what she's experiencing in that story. Why was it so important for you to focus on the people behind the stories from war? Well, I think it, it's important to tell, you know, sort of believable and sort of honest stories and really sort of set the context and sort of main that, maintain that connection to the world that we're trying to create. I think it's important for, for people to understand what the is on World War II. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go back to Daniel now to cover what you'll take to the battlefield with you. In Battlefield Five, we're aiming to mirror the immense arsenal of the Second World War. No trailer, though. That saw an explosion in terms of innovation when it comes to weapons and vehicles. No trailer yet. You will get to fly iconic airplanes, engage in incredible. What it says, weapons and vehicles. And also unleash secret weapons. For Fortification, the company weapons ties of war. Reveal trailer. There we go. Reveal trailer. Finally. And with the new fortification. Then we got to go through all these shits though, just to get to the real trailer. Come on. For advance through the terrain. Back to you guys. You know, in playing Battlefield. I know everyone in the audience will agree with me, people at home as well. I've always been impressed by the level of realism in the game. Um, I remember of course, that's why we go to Battlefield versus Call of Duty. With Call of Duty, we like 
recoil and what I liked about I want to say the arcadiness of the game where this one feels more grounded in there's a Gran Turismo of racing games and Call of Duty is Forza or Need for Speed. I don't want to say Need for Speed. Need for Speed don't got that title no more. Um, I give it a f yeah. You can say that. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a fair comparison. The pool of hardware that we can choose from is immense. There's so much there, and uh, for me, being a vehicle guy, it's really quite simple. Choice. It's the Tiger One. The Tiger but, One tank. Yeah, I think it's the most iconic tank from this era. I just think it's amazing. What, what do you What do you like about it? That's a weird choice for me. <laughs> Have you seen it? I think it's the best. What, like the looks? A bit, <laughs> but also. Are you saying that? Are you checking out a tank? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in a battle with that? Yeah, but I've never looked at it. I'm like, if I'm on the outside, I'm dying. If I'm on the inside, I'm concentrating. When, when are you looking? <laughs> when are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> and just run around the tank dying, and they, everyone's gonna be like, who's that guy looking at the tank? It's <laughs> beautiful. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> Andreas is a tank guy. Uh, Mr. Battlefield Lars, how about you? I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, you I'm, think he's I'm weird? I know. Yeah. Been trying to hide it. Now it's out. <laughs> the fact that I'm also a support player, I, I can't hit bombs. Damn, the, the comments are eating this guy alive. They're like, this is, I, I see a whole bunch of thumbs down, a whole bunch of middle fingers up. They're saying no women, trailers. And another part of it is, it's not funny. A system which uh, Daniel talked about for uh, high caliber weapons. So Everybody wants gameplay. It's there on the list, it's coming, but I'm with you, man. I, I want it now. In the wall. I want it now. Man. So I can finally make a difference on the battlefield. Hashtag no more knocking. I like this. <laughs> yes. All right, so we got a tank guy. We've got a, a weapons guy, Ryan. Uh, well, sort of embarrassing to admit, uh, unlike Lars, I can't hit a barn, period. So for me, um, <laughs> it's the toolbox. Um, in Battlefield 1, all players had a gas mask. Uh, in BF uh, Battlefield 5, we're going to replace that gas mask with a toolbox. So that means I can run around the battlefield with my toolbox, toolbox. setting up fortifications and uh, and, and sort of really changing the dynamic of the battlefield so that these guys uh, who can actually hit something, uh, I can offer off some value on the, on the playing field. Wait, wait, wait. So fortifications, you, you just skimmed over that, but what is what is fortifications? Well, I mean, this, as, as, a, as a support player, I mean, I think this is this is something you really love. Or something there we go. Fortifications, like, new defense uh, strategies uh, with it, it fortifications. Allows you sort of, for players who want to focus on the objective. I mean, this is, this is something you can sort of pull out your toolbox. You can... Uh, you know, build reinforcements. You can uh, reinforce buildings that Andreas has destroyed with his tank. Um, you can build foxholes and set up machine guns so people like Lars can sit there and and, and camp. Wait, so we can build? Uh, Why are they not showing this? As attackers and defenders. Is that was that in response to the gaming community? Because I know as a battlefield gamer, I always wanted what I didn't have. So first, I was going, "Hey guys, I need destruction. I need places to fall apart." And then at some point, I was like, "Too much destruction. Too much destruction. I, like there's nothing yeah. left." Was, was this a response? Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of esteemed players in here in the studio today, and in the that's a response from Fortnite. Fortnite, you could build and re you know lay out new stuff to defend and have. This is to counter that and give you an additional kind of toolbox to to rebuild, and then you and I can come in as heroes. Oh my God! They really, they really, out of all the things I thought they were gonna take from Fortnite, I didn't think they were gonna take building, but that's crazy. That's a crazy idea. That's a crazy idea, though. That's crazy. Let's hear about the company here to tell us more. Please welcome Nat. Okay. Revealed trailer and the launch trailer. Finally, our first female on screen, besides Shorty in the game. You can tailor and grow as you play. The company is the heart and soul of your personal experience, and the choices you make here for your company actually matters. Not only will your choices affect the way you look, but also how your weapons and vehicles play. As you squad up with your friends, make sure to pick a soldier that complements the rest of your squad to take on the battle ahead. And during the game, adapt to the changing circumstances by, ch by calling your company and bringing in the right soldier, weapon, or vehicle to suit your situation. Back to you, Trevor. Andreas, that, 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 That's that it? sounds awesome. Tell me more about the company and how it works, because you know I, I know from my years in Battlefield that the group that really plays together stays together. 
No, the company is something that... It's just claimed, right? For the first time, you can now create your own personal experience with the soldiers you take onto the battlefield. It's really up to you to decide how you want them to play and also how they, uh, how they look. So as you keep playing and you get better, your soldiers will get better with you. So, so give me an example of how That's it like. affect me as a support class. So if you take your, your support class player you want, and you start playing with that with that with that soldier, and you start progressing him, you're going to unlock a, a you know a set of new abilities, new perks, and sort of these new um, exotic ways to play the game as a support class, and then you know um, unlock new weapons for yourself to play with. You take that machine gun that Lars loves so much, uh, <laughs> and you level that machine gun up. You make the choices that matter, and then you decide, well, I think this needs its own custom paint job. So you sort of make that machine gun really make it your own, uh, and then you go in and you grab that that sort of iconic support outfit that you really want to wear going in the battle you jump in with some friends and off you go you know it's funny you brought up customization because i've always believed in battlefield the team is important but looking badass is the most important thing <laughs> I think in war can agree with this um looking badass is the most important thing my look to be properly badass in the battlefield well, yeah, of course. I mean, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing looking good. Right. Um, so I think, you know, part of the tactical gameplay that comes with Battlefield, I mean, what we want to do is give you the ability to create your own personal identity. So, uh, Yo, all they're doing is showing stills uh, you know, and talking that shit. Their boots going into battle, uh, their own they're like, look what we got versus what you got last week. You got that same multiplayer suite that you've been getting for years? Here's Fortnite <laughs> inside of Battlefield, basically, <laughs> which is okay, which is okay, because it's like. You get rewarded for playing the game. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty short. It's whatever you want to progress towards your company, your class, or a specific item, you play the game. And we set out to come. So we're getting a launch date. We says EA Play. Is that going to be the end? They're going to just be like, hey, come back to EA Play and watch. And I know it's a sensitive subject. I was talking about it during E3. Is this game going to be pay to win? There's a lot of thumbs down in the chat, which is crazy. Like, what if I have a lot of money? You just call me. Oh, they talking about loot boxes. So you 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 is won't be able to pay? No. So in Battlefield, it's always been about a balanced rock paper scissors gameplay, and it still is. You really have to, like Les was saying, you have to play the game. Uh, to earn new gear and skill is really key. Okay, but what about um, premium pass? Will it be one of those games where I have to shell out another 50 bucks six months after I've bought the game? Is that how it works? Well, I guess I get, I get the fun part of not taking any more <laughs> of your money as well, but um, no, there's no more premium pass in this game. This means. Uh, oh, <laughs> all right. That's good news. Wow. No premium pass. This is EA trying to be the good EA? <laughs> this is cool. This is how you win back. This means no more paying for maps, no more paying for modes. Um, you know, this is something the community has asked for. This is something the team really believes in. Um, so what we want is a game where people stay together, they play the games together, and they get to go on this journey through World War II together. So no loot box and no paid DLC? So <laughs> All right, well, it's time to learn about what happens after the game launches. So to tell us all about live service, please welcome back Natalie and Daniel. So launch is really just the beginning. Tides of War is an epic journey that you or your company Tides will take War. World War II. It will bring you an evolving, diverse game that will grow over time as we immerse you and your company in different theaters of war. Playing Battlefield 5 is an experience unlike any other. It will differ from all previous Battlefield games. And the most important thing is to all players. Yes, and there will always be new battles, new fronts, and rewards on the horizon. And by removing Premium Pass, we are keeping the community together. Yes, so exactly. No ex expansion packs, and all players will be able to take part in the same journey through Battlefield 5. And with Tides of War, our players will experience themed chapters of World War II, each spanning over several months. And these will focus on key moments that... Oh, this one's about to end. It's about to end real quick. This sounds to me like a wild, full ride through World War II, but uh, Lars, like how big of a journey will this be? How long is this journey? <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, to, to put it into perspective, this was World War, and I mean, to me, it's gonna be a huge journey. Uh, this trailer better be fucking long. I'm gonna be hella tight. We sat through this bullshit of talking and explanation 
which is cool. They explained a lot that they probably couldn't convey through a trailer, but let it be a meaty trailer. Give me like six, seven minutes, please. Oh, I think it's going to be like a two minute teaser, man. It's just just the beginning, and as you play it through, you'll start to be taken to new horizon, new locations, new gameplay, and I mean, stick in for the ride. It, it, it sounds like it's going to be one of those experiences where the more I play, the more cool stuff I can get. I, I get rewarded for my time. Is that going to be across different modes? It's, again, it's, it's really simple. You just have to play the game to earn you. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if it's multiplayer or combined arms. Uh, like, like you see here, you will be able to earn new vehicles, new weapons, it's going to be dog tags, and soldier skins, weapon skin. It's all there to really customize your, your crew to, to really be standing out on the battlefield the way you want it to be. Right, it sounds amazing. That's yeah, cool. I have one question, and that is, when does this all start? Well, uh, the game launches in October. Um, so starting November, running through uh, early 2019, we're going to start with our first chapter, uh, which is going to focus on the fall of Europe. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna explore sort of the German mechanized war machine as it pushes its way into Europe. Um, this is gonna be live gameplay focused events. We're gonna have thematic rewards tied to this. Mm -hmm. You know, we cool. can't wait to talk to the community more mm -hmm. about this between uh, as we lead up to launch. Yep. Well, I'm not gonna lie, you guys have definitely raised my analog stick, and I think we've waited long <laughs> enough. <laughs> this is the most immersive <laughs> battlefield yet in a World War II you have never seen before, where launch is just the beginning. Of the journey. Trailer time. I think it's time we see this thing. Are you you all ready? Yeah. Thank you. We've been ready for 26 minutes. The reveal trailer for Battlefield 5. Okay. Let's go. Let's see this. The Xbox. Call of Duty's rocking with PlayStation. Battlefield's rocking my Xbox. Whoa. Oh, don't 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 mess up during the, the trailer now. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. This shit is messing up during the trailer. Oh my god, the building fell. Go! This shit look crazy. Yeah, this is gonna be a full cinematic trailer. There's no way they're gonna jump into gameplay after this. Even though it does look in the engine. But it does look cinematic. Oh, shit. Oh, gameplay. There we go. This shit look nuts. Oh, he threw him the ammo. Woo. You can slide. <laughs> My nigga slid. This still has to be cinematic. Look at this shit. Oh, no, this shit look crazy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's what they were talking about with the explosions having like a... Oh. Uh. There we go. Thank you, Shorty. Shorty got one arm! <laughs> That was a trailer. That was a trailer. All right. Five out of five. Wow. Wow. That was a five out of five trailer. You saw the thing? The man? The huh? I hope yep. they got insurance. That was insane. Do you see that? I did say it. <laughs> Andres, I don't feel like you saw it. I feel like you've seen it before. I want to see the building. I want to see them build in, call, in the battlefield. I want to see them build structure or whatever. How, however it's going to work. I want to see how that's going to work in game. 
Yeah, that was. That was dope. I give it to them. Before we go, before we go, am I, am and they leaving. Saying, there were some new animations. There, there were some new moves yeah. that you could you could do in the game. There's a few. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. To be honest, as in, I think we should thank the team back home in yeah, Stockholm um, for huge call out. helping us to get to this point. I think they are truly amazing, yeah. and our fans. Again, we've been waiting for this moment for so long to be able to reveal what we've been working on. This is really packed with gameplay, and then, I mean, a lot of this is, is direct feedback from community, yeah. leading to a lot of these improvements. So it's a huge thank you for, yeah. for the support, and once again, the team for doing uh, extraordinary work. Unfortunately, we're not going to hit the mark they're going for. I'm yeah, sure yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Give it up for the people in Stockholm, please. Yeah, that was beautiful. This is how you... There was a lot of talking, but this is how you do the event. This is how you do the event, Call of Duty. Next year? October 19th. October 19th, okay. These guys are giving away free expansion packs in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4. So what? head to battlefield.com for all the details. And next up, is EA Play on June 9th, where you'll see multiple... I need that Battlefield 1 expansion pack. I hope you're as excited as I am for Battlefield 5. To watch that trailer again, go to youtube.com forward slash Battlefield. And if you want more info, join some of the team here with Xbox, who are hosting an exclusive post-show on mixer.com forward slash Xbox. That is I'm not watching a post-show, but... joining us, everybody. I'm Trevor Noah. Good night. Wow. That was cool. That was cool. That was cool. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That's it? Yeah, it's looking like that's it, though. It's looking like that's it. Looking like that is it. Okay, so. Excuse me. Let's bring this all over there. We go. Like that. There we go. Let me turn off this music, right? You can still hear the music. There we go. All right, boom. Boom. So, that whole event was... Uh, if I had to give it a grade, just like I did the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 reveal event, I gave it a four, I think a four or three. I'm forgetting right now. I'm pretty sure you're going to let me know in the comments. But that was because all we saw was one, one trailer of gameplay for the multiplayer and everything else was just... Everything else... Excuse me. Woo. Everything else was cinematic trailer, and I felt like they could have showed way more Call of Duty than what they initially showed in the reveal event. And I feel the same way for this. We saw like a bit four minute trailer, and I felt like it could have been way longer, you know, of stuff they could have showed instead of just talking. I'm gonna have to give it the same, almost the same grade because the trailer was amazing. I give the trailer a five out of five. The event itself was very fucking lackluster. Now, for an event focusing around one game, it was better than the Call of Duty, so I'm going to have to give it a 5. But I feel like... It just, like, it needs more... You know what I'm saying? Like, they needed to show more. They could have shown more with the guns. They could have shown more with the company. They were just talking and talking and talking. Now, mind you, that's what they need to do in a real a reveal event like this. It just felt kind of bland. And a lot of the stuff was falling flat. Now, mind you, the host, he rocked it. He did his job. He had us laughing, even though the studio audience laugh felt fake at times. But... Mind you, it did felt professionally well done where on the Call of Duty side, it kind of felt like they were in front of fans, like it wasn't, it was more real in that sense, but it felt like they were just reading off a fucking prompter and it kind of didn't, like the exact same words Sunset on stage got used in the fucking trailer for the Black Ops, um, the Blackout mode, so... 
I don't want to compare them. The apples and oranges. This is very interesting, again, because Battlefield is kind of going in a Fortnite sense with the defense and you are being able to build stuff back up. I want to see how that is inside of the game because that sounds fucking interesting. Let me know what you think of Battlefield 5 or Battlefield V in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter. You guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube. And yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of these trailer reaction reviews, including reaction reviews to these live events all E3 long. And this is just kind of a test to see if I could get everything set up and working right. So thank you for watching. I'm going to see you guys on the next trailer reaction review. Now, let me turn this off because my mouse pad is acting dumb. So I have to deal with this now until I get it right.